I started working for Startup Sterling two and a half years ago. And I think um, when you realised the need, the level of need locally, it was quite staggering. When you realised how many people there are in Stirlingshire who are, who are desperately in need of food and because they are in financial crisis. So I think that was my motivation for getting involved with the charity. Yes, we run three food banks within Stirling every week um, and we now have a mobile food bank service which delivers food packs to people in, uh, who are needing our support in the local area. So we're, we're out in the villages um, delivering up to Town Drum, Kriel Mari, um, out as far as Calairn. Um, we, um, so we have around about 160 people every week who are needing the support of the food banks. So we, we are basically in a, a, a warehouse here. We have, all, we have this warehouse which is our storage facility basically. It's where all the food, all the donations of food come, get sorted, weighed, packed. And then we have, um, we distribute the food from what we know as food banks, where people uh, come and people who have referred to us come and actually access the food. So uh, we have teams of volunteers who run each food bank and um, they last for about two hours. They're held in sort of local community halls or church halls and um, that's where people come. Once they're referred to us, normally people are referred through Citizens Advice Bureau but it could be from their housing officer, it could be people who are in housing difficulties. The range of people who need our help is very wide. It's people who have maybe lost their job, it's people who are maybe waiting for their benefits to um, have Come changes in. to their benefits, maybe they've had sanctions imposed on them, uh, people who are on zero hour contracts, um, lots of different reasons, maybe families broken down, maybe um, an unexpected bill is coming in. There are lots of reasons why people find themselves in crisis. Um, we're there just to, to help them while they're in crisis. Absolutely, there's been a huge demand, a huge increase in demand, even in the over the two years that I've been here. Um, and now we, so last December alone, last Christmas, throughout our um, Feed a Family appeal, we provided Christmas dinner for 365 people, and 100, around about 150 of them were children. So that's people who would have gone without if it hadn't been for um, for our feed a family and for the fact that we were able to provide them with Christmas dinner. So we've had a huge increase um, over the years, so it's now around about 160 people each week who receive our help. It's not so much over Christmas but it's throughout the winter where people have got so many additional financial pressures. Um, people we know people are having to choose between heating or eating and they have to choose whether they're going to put the cooker on and cook a turkey for two hours or whether they're going to have electricity or have the, the heating on. So also the, the additional financial demands of um, Christmas on the families is that we all know that it's a very expensive time of year. So, um, because of that, we do see an increase throughout December, also in January as well. That continues throughout January as people are still trying to get back on their feet. Yeah. Well, last year we we raised five thousand. We hoped to raise five thousand pounds last year. We um, we were delighted when we actually raised fifteen, almost fifteen thousand pounds. Oh my god! So uh, I'm. That's amazing. I'm, I'm very nervously. <laughs> just waiting <laughs> as as a target as a goal, goal. but um, basic five thousand pounds will help us cover the costs of the Christmas dinner. But what we want to do is raise enough money, additional money, so that we can provide healthy food packs throughout all of next year. It means we could keep providing fresh fruit and vegetables, meat and dairy products in every food pack that we give out next year, but we'll only be able to do that if we raise enough in this appeal. So, so it is a Christmas appeal in that it's for Christmas dinner for families who wouldn't have Christmas dinner otherwise, but the effect 
will we'll be ongoing. There will be healthy meals being distributed over the next year as a result too. So, so we're hoping people will get involved, we're hoping people will tell others about it. But, um, it makes a huge difference to families. Last year when we were distributing our food, it was just such, it was very uh, moving to be able to provide a family with dinner when you knew that they weren't going to. Basically, we, we all, we are all very hands-on. Um, we're uh, very much involved with the families that we support and have the individuals. We have a lot of people who are in, who are on their own in temporary accommodation in Stranding, so that we possibly um, don't have anyone to celebrate with and because they're going to be on their own so to be able to give them, at least be able to give them a Christmas dinner is quite special. Um, certainly there is, there is a, a risk of food banks becoming part of the social landscape and we're very conscious of that and we're very conscious, conscious all of the fact that by, by existing at all it creates a, a level of dependency and um, we are trying to address that. We are launching a project in, on the, it's actually on the 29th of December. We're launching Beyond the Food Bank. It's a new project and a new service whereby we, we will work more intensively with people who've been needing the support of the food bank on an ongoing basis. So we'll be helping them identify and address the reasons for their crisis, the reasons why they're um, continually needing help and so it might be bringing in um, a few poverty advisors, money advisors, uh, benefits advisors, ad um, addiction workers, um, family mediation, and we'll be introducing cooking classes to help people to, to show people how to cook healthily on a budget, we'll be doing shopping on a budget courses and it's just helping people so it's helping people just get back on their feet and sometimes people have become very vulnerable and very isolated because they're in crisis and because they're in poverty. They've become quite isolated and are unable really to access the support and help they need. So we will be there to, to bring support to them and to help people address them in their terms. I think that there, are, there is no reason for anyone not to to come to us for help. We're there, we can provide help um, when you need it. The reasons people come find themselves in crisis are so varied and it's so and they're so and so many people are coming to us, you know, I think you know, hopefully that the, the days of the boot stuff more attached to coming to the food bank are, are over. I, I don't think they are over but that, you know hopefully one day we'll there, will not, there won't be any stigma attached to accessing the support of food banks, but ideally it's trying to help people long term. And we, we're there to give the, the short term crisis emergency support, but also to try and help people address that and, and move away from the crisis. Well, first and foremost, we're asking people to help us, well, to help by donating to the appeal. Um, the main way people can um, get involved is by um, going online, going through our website page or our Facebook page and donating online. Alternatively, people can text to donate. So you text STARTUP to 70660 and a donation of £10 will be made to the appeal. So first and foremost, we're asking people to support us themselves. We're as asking people to help us publicise the appeal as widely as possible, to share it, to share the appeal and to ask their friends to text to donate as well. We'd love to have, we'd love to be able to not just provide Christmas food, but to continue through all of next year as well, helping people live healthily on our budget, so we, but we can only do it if this is good. Thank you so much.